Um, well, everybody here and everybody wherever you are in the world watching this, uh, welcome to Cloud Native Wasm Day here at KubeCon in Los Angeles in 2021, and it's amazing to be here. Yeah. So I'm Ralph Squalacci. I'm going to kick this day off. All right, we're going to talk about a few things very quickly. I'm not going to speak for very long because I want to make sure that we get a chance to go straight into uh, all the great presentations. But I do want to set out a few, uh, not just rules, but really uh, an understanding of what we're going to try and do here today. So for everybody, whether you're here or whether you're there, I want to thank you for all, uh, all for coming, making this a great presentation. Um, the one thing that's important is no matter where you are, uh, we uh, follow the code of conduct here um, at KubeCon, and it's a great thing. And it basically means we treat people as humans because that's what everybody deserves to be treated like. So that's important. Uh, we need to do that. And that's true for online or in person. For those who are not here, uh, if you're watching this, you're already logged into the meeting play environment, which is great. For those who are here, you're going to end up for the virtual presentations logging in to the meeting play environment. We'll make sure that questions from both uh, areas of existence are passed to the others. Um, so we have moderators taking care of all that. Um, I do want to say that during the virtual presentations, if somebody is uh, asking a question of the virtual presenter and they're not available during the presentation, Go ahead and move to the uh, cloud native Slack that's set up for today, right? Um, you can do that. That's the entire community for this day is there. You can ask your question there. The presenter will be arrive whenever they get a chance to arrive. And so that's a great place to make sure that we continue to share information all throughout the day and throughout the week, right? Finally, I do want to thank all the sponsors, uh, the LF, the CNCF, um, but most importantly, the people that you don't know, that you see if you're here, all the people taking care of the health checks, uh, the uh, streaming help, the AV help, um, and security of the entire facility. I want to thank everybody for that as well. So let's start. I want to give you a couple of very quick um, framing uh, ideas to think about here, because uh, this is a very interesting place. So. If we move over, the first one is that this ecosystem is wide open, right? This is a great place to talk about a fantastic bit of engineering that can bring cloud native work. And by that, we mean you know, API driven, automated scale out engineering uh, in an iterative fashion in some very abstract way, but we all have details about how that's implemented. We can bring that to a, a vastly broader array of scenarios. Uh, than simply hyperscale cloud, right? The big clouds that do this work and big containers and big machines. First and foremost, it's important to understand that we're at the very beginning of this, right? The technologies exist, but the ecosystem and tools to bring the same talented things we've developed with containers, with Kubernetes, it doesn't exist yet in the WebAssembly space, and that means the world is wide open here. All of the knowledge, all of the practices, the monitoring, observability, security, policy, everything we've done with containers and Kubernetes and so forth, we need to do with WebAssembly. And there is no standard there, although there are beginning to be tools appear that make, help us make use of things that we already use, OCI registries and various other things. So it's very important that you bring your knowledge to WebAssembly. Oop, I probably popped something there. So you are the future, and your knowledge here is what's going to build this ecosystem in a cloud-native way and for everyone. Now, WebAssembly has, a, of course, a couple of features that make it very powerful, and you're going to hear a lot about that today. So for example, there's the default security stance. It's no trust by default, and it's a binary format. So it doesn't bring along in the environment any number of CVEs that might appear in the future accidentally. Those kinds of constrictions in the security stance are very important. Um, it also brings its portability, but across languages, but also environments like operating systems and 
chip architectures and things like that. So that's a critical thing. And you're also going to hear a lot about its disk, network, uh, and runtime size, which is, we're, operates at a very different scale than containers have. Uh, although containers are very, very flexible, very hard to bring them down to the size of things that WebAssembly, which uh, was born in the, in the browser and on the internet, uh, takes for granted, those kinds of sizes. So we're going to hear a lot about these, and I want you to investigate them all because the ecosystem is wide open. But I do want to mention um, that last one, right? The small size of runtimes and modules. In particular, I want to point out that some of these things that seem like we uh, hear about them all the time, hyperscale cloud or edge, let's use the word edge. You're going to hear the word edge a few times today, right? But just because you hear it does not mean that the WebAssembly is only for the edge you think you know about now. Because when we talk about edge, those are marketing words. They are abstract. They're meant to be flexible. And yet we end up with a very concrete idea of what we think that really is, right? But to give you some sense of historical context, there was a time when mainframes were the edge. That that's where you did your computing. You delivered your code to a mainframe. The computer did not come to you, right? And when PCs came along, they were not initially considered a threat to compute. Compute was a mainframe. So the historical evolution of even something like Edge makes it very, very clear that compute is going to continue to go where it wishes to go because the technologies enable it. So mainframes were the edge. That's some edge. So the very, very soon, if not already, there will be no clean edge. Again, to take that word as a, you know, a statement that has meaning to us. There will be no clean edge. We'll have gradients of compute. So we are not here just to do edge work, and we are not here just to do cloud work, because it turns out they're going to end up being uh, the same, or a gradient of change. My co-presenter uh, here today, uh, Liam Randall of Cosmonic, he'll come on in a little bit, just published a great article. And I've got a little QR code, so if you're able to shoot the QR code on uh, Meeting Play, uh, there's a great article that he wrote on Newstack recently. And he mentions this predicted figure of 50 billion edge computers, chips, by 2030, 50 billion. Now, in my opinion, this is likely a radical undercount, right? But if imag imagine that we can use the skills we have now to create an open source cloud native, cloud native abstraction layer for even half of those devices. I mean, I'm not greedy. I, you know, 25 billion, 30 billion, I'm good with that, right? Now, that is not an edge. That is a new cloud. And the techniques and the skills that we have learned in that new world will be directly applicable. You will redefine those marketing terms. They will not be given to us. If you are in that world, you're going to make that edge into a new cloud. Now, if I can click the button. There is a caveat to all of this, right? It's easy to think that there are, especially when people put up a large number of uh, dollars to sponsor and so forth. There are mega corporations and so forth. They're very powerful governments and so forth. But it is impossible for any entities to build this on their own. Everything here depends on the, the talent of all of us to put this together, right? We are all on the same team. We just work for different people. Kelsey has always been right. And we need to do that again. So I want to leave you here with that. I want to thank you for being here, whether you're here in person or watching the, this on one of those small things. right? Either way, you're welcome, and you're here for a treat today. And so with that, I'm going to hand off to Liam. Let's do this. Thanks very much.